In this section, we're going to look at two features of Webpack that until recently were nearly impossible to achieve at the same time. You could server render, or you could code split, but doing both? Well, no wonder so many people use Next.js. We'll start with an intro to server-side rendering with Express and React. Then we'll move on to the world of dynamic importing and universal JavaScript, where we use the same components on the server that we ship to the client. Finally, we'll cap the section by delivering asynchronous CSS and JavaScript chunks as we navigate through our blog using React Router. You're going to want to watch to the end of this one. So first, we're going to look at rewiring our app for a real React-style server-side render. Specifically, it'll be an intro into hooking up the server-side to match the client-side JavaScript. And we'll expand our knowledge of SSR for the rest of the course in an effort to keep client-server parity as we add features. We're going to start right where we left off in the last episode, but if you need to catch up, get check out SSR React. All right, so as you can see, in our project, we have an Express.js file that serves static assets from the dist folder. When Webpack dev server is run, it outputs a piece of HTML using index.ejs as the template. It also includes a React component via the app file. App.js uses the standard React hot loader setup with an app container wrapped around the root component injected into the React root, which is defined in index.ejs. In development, this code hot reloads the root component and all subcomponents. Now I go over this again because what we want to do in this episode is move from using the HTML Webpack plugin to outputting the HTML directly in the Express server. Because if we do that, we can use Express and React DOM to render the React component as we render the index.html right before we send it down to the user. Now this is called server-side rendering, and it's a surprisingly large topic. We're going to dip our toe into the topic with this first lesson about render to string. All right, so to get started, let's take our express.js file, and we're going to import React from the React package, and we're going to import React DOM server from React DOM slash server. So now, right above the express static gzip, I want to add a new piece of middleware that we will define. It's going to serve every route. So we're going to use server get. And we're going to give it an asterisk. So this is every get request the server can handle. Now that's going to use a function, which we will define. That function takes two arguments, request and response. So again, let's define a piece of HTML using React DOM server, render to string. Let's give it a simple piece of JSX. Now using the send function, we can return that piece of HTML. So React DOM server takes JSX as an argument, and it outputs plain HTML as a string. We're going to send that string down. Now our old index.html is still in here. So let's go to our terminal and remove all of that. All right, so now it's empty. Now one more thing to do. Let's comment out the HTML Webpack plugin. Now when we start up our dev server, we can see that index.html is not rendered. When we bring it up in a browser, we can see that the only thing it has is what React output using render to string. Hello, SSR. All right, so that's a good start. But now let's do it for real. Back in Express.js, let's expand what this can do. So we're still going to use response or res.send. This time we're going to send a plain string. The string is going to be the contents of the index.ejs. So we're going to take out the title, and we're going to add a link to our main CSS. At the bottom, we're going to add two script tags, vendor bundle and main bundle. Inside of our React root, let's give it something dynamic, a string 
hello SSR. Okay, so what does that look like? So you can see that hello SSR is rendered. But once it pulls down main bundle, it renders our full file. You can also see that main CSS is not actually main CSS. Instead, it's another copy of the same string, which is why we get this error. The resource interpreted a style sheet because it says style sheet right here, but it's actually a piece of HTML. That's because the middleware defined in Express is always going to be called in the order it was set up. So in this case, server get with the asterisk overrules anything that comes after it. So one thing we can do is we can take this static piece of middleware and put it above the asterisk. So let's take it out of the prod file as well. Now let's npm run build. And we've got another dist folder full of all of our static files. Now if we npm run prod, You can see that main CSS comes in as CSS, as does the two JS files, and the image, of course. The index is still hello SSR. So how do we get our app root component inside our React root on server-side render? Luckily, this is pretty easy. So it's best to think about the app file that's required inside of main.js as the client-side app file, and it has nothing to do with the server-side. The server-side is going to be handled using the React DOM server so if we go into here where it says hello SSR and instead put react dom server render to string you can put the app root now if we import the app root let's start up dev again you can see that we have a little problem pulling in Markdown, something we're going to get to in the next episode. For now, let's go into AppRoot, take this out, as well as the image file and the content. All right, it looks like we're getting there. If you pull up the source, you'll see that it's been rendered inside the React root with the class file, a data React root attribute, and all the variables we defined inside of our component. We're nearly there. The problem is, because it's not compiled by Webpack, it doesn't understand how to require an image, how to import Markdown, and use its variables. If we added a kind of a shim in the place of all this, then we'd be able to do it but it wouldn't be dynamic. In this shim, we're defining markdown data not as the markdown file, but as the markdown file only when Webpack is in use. Otherwise, we're defining an empty object. In the same way, we're defining an image path as the actual image path when Webpack is true. Otherwise, we're just giving it a plain string. And then you'd, of course, change this to image path. Now, this is just to illustrate the problem we're having. Running something in Node is not the same as running it in Webpack. But that's okay, there's actually a solution to this that I find a lot more interesting and intriguing. And that's what we're going to uncover in the next episode, where we use Webpack to process Express.js into something that Node can read, including all images, markdown, and other types of files. It really is, in my opinion, the coolest part of Webpack, when you can start using its power inside the Node ecosystem. So let's get that going in the next episode.